People are worried about declines in bees. And I can tell you that it's definitely going on. Most of the environment is modified so much or completely gone that there's a bee decline crisis going on. If you just think about all the different kinds of flowering plants, that breadth is in the bee world too we just don't get to see that very much. So there are super tiny bees that are half the size of a grain of rice, maybe two millimeters. There's bees that people recognize, bumblebees and carpenter bees that are huge. North America has 50 some species, or about 50 species of bumblebees, has a bunch of different kinds of carpenter bees. Um, roughly there's 4,000 species that we think are occur in the United States, the exact number still to be determined because we don't even know the names of a whole bunch of them. There are long and skinny ones that nest in the holes of beetles make. There are uh, bees that are parasitic on other bees, so they're cuckoo bees, let's call them. So they invade the nest and lay their egg in the nest of another bee species. And that baby parasitic bee then eats the other bee, or at least kills it, and then eats all the food. Maybe 20% of all the bee species are parasitic. So there's tons of stuff going on. Some in every color that you can think of, red, yellow, green, black, blue, metallic, not metallic, occur in bees, pretty fantastical. If you think about bees and um, what role they play, I think we think a lot about honey, which is not a North American thing. Honey comes from honeybees. That's an introduced species from Europe. None of the bees in the United States produce honey, but they do all the pollination. So if you think about wild plants, flowers, if there's a flower, something that's an insect is pollinating that because the plant wouldn't bother producing a flower if it wasn't trying to connect bee in most instances. So the color of flowers is only seen by bees and um, otherwise, the plant wouldn't, so to speak, bother with producing something that is colorful and just make it green so it can produce chlorophyll or brown so it could tuck away. There are a set of bees for each plant, so start picking out chunks of those plants from the environment. The bees that support them disappear because you don't have willow, for example. You don't have the bees that live off of willow, which knocks out in Maryland eight species because we want a functioning environment, right? We want to have an environment that keeps all species with us, you know, from an economic point of view, maybe that's useful to us someday. From an environmental point of view, it would be like knocking bricks out of a house. Sure, you can knock out a bunch of bricks, bricks being maybe species, and uh, that house will be fine for a while, but you um, have a little earthquake, take out one too many bricks, then the wall falls down and then the house falls down. So we're doing the same thing. We're knocking out some of the bricks, some of the species by removing these, the plants first and then the bees come too from there. And we're all part of that. So we have a bunch of challenges right now with native bees. The biggest one is really just that we're losing more and more of our natural habitat. So it's all about plant diversity in the biggest sense, so conservation of bees, conservation of plants. You start losing those plants either because we're not uh, harboring, protecting what we have. There's lots of reasons to look at that, particularly uh, loss of open country, places that would be normally go through the ebb and flow of disturbed sites. The fact that our parks become smaller and smaller, we don't have this kind of capacity. Things drop out, they don't come back in. That's a, the biggest issue, which is habitat loss. You know, we're just using it all up. It's a one-way ratchet, right? 
put in houses, you put in roads, you put in parks, you're playing fields, ball fields, landfills, whatever. You don't get back the natural area that was taken away. Honeybees are the bee that everyone knows. Culturally, we're intertwined with honeybees for thousands of years. They came, they being honeybees, came from Europe. We brought them over here almost right away. Honeybees have a lifestyle that is extremely different from any of the lifestyle of the bees that occur here in North America. Honeybees are using all the native plants, or a lot of them too, and they're big competitors with the native bees. So if the reason that you're a beekeeper and the reason that you have hives on your property is because you think you're saving bees, you're actually doing the opposite. You're bringing in competitors with the native bees and you're not doing anything really to uplift the total population safety for honeybees. You simply have a bunch of pet insects. Pesticides kill bees, right? So that's a given, right? If you spray pesticides on a bee, it's dead just as much as a mosquito. When people come into a suburban area and they're spraying for mosquitoes and they're saying this does not impact pollinators or bees, they're just wrong. And so you have to be very careful about your personal application. If you're fogging your area for mosquitoes, you're fogging it for bees and a lot of that will drift to your neighbors and it's not a positive thing. If you're looking at agricultural systems, again, depending on where and when you're spraying your pesticides, where and when that intersects with bees, the bees are dead, or um, if not dead, then often highly impacted. So honeybee growers know this, honeybee keepers rather, know this all the time, because a lot of times they're providing the pollination services for different crops. And then when they're not, their hives might be at the edges of these fields. So there's lots of examples where the wrong application, the not alerting of area beekeepers results in completely dead hives from pesticide overuse. When we talk about doing things for bees, what we really wanna be talking about is doing things for open country plants and bringing back field, pasture, meadow, plant species in large areas, large enough that attract these uncommon bees and maintain that in a variety of places throughout our habitats. The one thing that people can do if, they, if they're the lovers of bees and wanna do something and wanna help is actually nothing to do with bees. It's all about plants. So plant native plants, there's a rough estimate that for every five flowers, every five, uh, five flowers produce enough pollen and nectar to feed a baby bee, to generate one. That's a way oversimplification, but it means that one perennial plant, you know, one clump of asters is supporting a bunch of bees. So it doesn't take much, a potted plant can do that same sort of thing. Look at your yard. If you have a lot of lawn there, you know, you have to really kind of think about that. Are you really using all that lawn? Do you need like, is it required for your happiness to have all that lawn? Probably not. Probably there's sections and corners and backs of sheds and things like that that could be given back to the bees. I mentioned it before, but nature doesn't produce lawn, right? That's a artifact and that has to be maintained. And there's costs, environmental costs, everything from the pollution that the lawn mowing equipment requires. If you're applying fertilizers or herbicides, greater impact, the sheeting of that water that it drops onto a lawn and just skates off down to the rivers is another impact. It's huge. And so your contribution is really right in your backyard. Rule of thumb, mow once a year if you have a place where people don't care about your mowing habits and you're doing 80% of a good job. If you're thinking about, well, your own personal pesticide use, um, again, take a look at it, take a close inspection of like why you're using pesticides to begin with. What are the, the reasons I don't use any pesticides? The reason for using pesticides is 
uh, really that you're trying to help a plant that maybe is telling you that I don't really belong here anymore because I've got something that's eating me up or killing me and it's time to shift to a new set of plants or a new, new particular plant in itself. A lot of responsibility to use pesticides and in most cases you really don't need to. So bees are really robust, like you build it and they will come. My life in lots of ways revolves around bees, like my home, my one acre of lawn when I bought it is now one acre of wild, you know, plants of different kinds that I do experiments with and try, oh, what about this species? And I've thrown away for years ago my lawnmower, now I just have a string trimmer. I'm acting on my beliefs. And so I'm doing my part here at my house. <laughs>